Are you starting or am I starting? I'm starting. All right, mate. Wait. Oh, All right, now I got it. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Health and Wealth. And today we are going to talk about a topic which actually came from a Monday meeting. Mm -hmm. In our Monday meeting, you had said, Nate, I noticed that your waistline is fitting a little bit tighter than it had been in the <laughs> summer. So today I want you to talk about exercise. And the problem that we have right now in Ohio is leaving the house, right? Yes. So how, to, how are ways that we can exercise if we have a limited space? Okay, so we're battling the winter blues. This, that's basically our topics of health and wealth for the winner. Um, and so just to, just to touch, I hope that you've all added a vitamin D supplement to your regimen since last week. This week, we're going to talk about staying active while we're stuck inside this winter. Now we are about to get like a lot of snow. That's what we're for, what they are forecasting. But you know, la the past few winters, we've had nice days in January and February, like 50 degree days. Sure. So I remember Christmas being walking outside in shorts yeah, and shorts. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to bank on us not getting those days, seeing as we're getting so much more snow. And let's talk about some at-home exercises. And I apologize, I meant to bring props and make Nate do these, but hmm. so strength exercises, you can do these in your house wherever. Squats, sit-ups or crunches, um, lunges push-ups, and you can do planks, inside planks, um, bicycles. You can do that while you're watching TV, while you're cooking dinner, whatever you want to do. And then as far as cardio, you could do jumping. You could do burpees. Do you like burpees? I hate burpees. I do burpees all the time. Of course this, this is, I think that everybody, uh, one of the best things that I ever did was I created a workout room in my basement. Yeah. Because uh, especially in a busy day, for me, even if the, even if the gym was 10 minutes away, that's back and forth, the 20 minutes, right, yeah. that I've saved. And I can get my workout done in 20 minutes. Yeah. If you've got a 10 by 10 space, I mean, all the things you just mentioned, uh, you could make a, a very rigorous workout over, somebody might say, well, I, I don't have any equipment. Do you have a set of stairs in your house? Mm -hmm. do you Even if you don't, you can. Yeah, up, up, downs. I mean, what I like to do is circuits. So I will do something like, for example, what I mean by a cir circuit is, you'll do 20 squats, you'll drop down, do 20 push-ups, you'll do 20 sit-ups. You do 20 burpees, run up and down the steps a couple of times, mm -hmm. you know, keep doing this over and over again. You'll break a sweat fast. Oh, but yeah, without mm -hmm. a doubt. Yeah. So cardio, you can jump, you can do burpees, you can walk around the house while you're on the phone. That's Nate inspired. I thought about mm -hmm. that. I think better on my feet. Yeah. And you're moving. So, um, steps, if you have steps going to your basement or maybe you have a two story house, just walk up and down the steps and also running in place, which is it ideal. No, but it gets you moving. And so I wanted to touch, those are just basic at-home exercises that you can do. I did want to touch on some at-home online programs. You know, these are things you can just do, but if you want, if you are someone who does best in a class-like setting or you need instruction, here's some online top or online program. Fitness Blender. I know Julie here, she uses that. Pop Sugar Fitness. Um, if you're a Reddit user, Reddit has a body weight fitness community. One thing that I, I had the goal in my health portion was to give you programs or exercises that didn't cost money. Um, I didn't want you to have to go buy a gym membership or something like that. So these are all free. Um, body weight fitness is probably your best bet because you don't need any equipment, just right. your body. So the Reddit body weight fitness community, and then YouTube has a ton of free exercises. I wanted to touch one of the one of the ones I saw a lot, and I actually did it in the beginning of quarantine. Was yoga with Adrian? Um, it's a good exercise program, but there's plenty. There's cardio. There's strength. You you want it? YouTube has it. Let me touch though on some free fitness subscription trials. Now, at the end of these, you would have to pay for the app. The first one I want to touch on is Peloton's app. Your favorite. Always promoting. I love Peloton. They have a two month free um, trial subscription of the app. And then after that, I'll have to get back with you. I'll put it in the blog post about how much that is. Beachbody On Demand has a 14 day trial. I actually do really like Beachbody's workout programs too. I used to do Pio a lot. Um, like when I, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I used to do that a lot. Nike Training Club also has a free subscription trial. And then while we're talking about spending a little bit of money, like I said, I wanted this to be budget friendly. 
Here are a few examples of workout equipment you can buy on any budget. A jump rope, resistance bands, dumbbells, but those can get pricey. They can get pricey, but the thing about dumbbells is once you buy them, like you've got them forever. Forever. I mean, yeah. they really can't hurt them. The jump rope's fantastic. And There's, it's like a dollar. I don't know what they're called, but they actually make these bands that you can put around your, your thighs. Bands. And then so when you run in place, like it's providing resistance against, didn't you do that? You can do jumping exercises. I mean, burpees, squats, you know, squatting up and jumping down in yeah. place, hmm. all that. The other thing that's amazing, I know I'm stealing your thunder here, is which is what I like to do best, is uh, like a pull-up bar. Like if, if I were to have a basic equipment, say this is what I get some dumbbells mm -hmm. and a pull-up bar, because you can do push-ups on the ground with body weight, right? And somebody might say, well, I can't do pull-ups. You, you don't have to. You can set the bar low enough. There's bars that you can actually wedge between like door jams and things like that. But like, so if I have a, a weak upper body, mm -hmm. one of the things you can do is uh, there are two phases of a contraction. There's the uh, concentric, which is the squeezing of the mu muscle and the eccentric, which is the lengthening of them. Both of them can build strength. So what you would do in a pull up is you would jump up and then just resist holding as long down oh. as possible, right? And then jump up again and then resist holding down as long as possible. They'll achieve the same thing. Have you ever seen those videos where people have pull-up bars? <laughs> yeah, they're on every America's Funniest Home video. Out there, right? It's like every okay. episode. That would be me. I, okay. Uh, do you have a price point for those, though? I don't know how much those would cost. I looked at, I saw them, but I didn't know how much they would cost, so I didn't put them in here. So not everybody has a basement, but what I did in my basement, I, I have a pull-up station, but um, you could actually drill a hole through your rafters and put like a, a large doll, doll rod or something in there to do that as well. Oh. But I mean, there's lots of ways you can... I mean, you can create a pull-up bar that is, you know, that is, you know, maybe five feet high that you just get down on your knees in order yeah. to do if you want. So. Okay. So pull-up bars. Um, and the last at-home workout equipment option I have is kettlebells, and you love kettlebells. You can do you can do a ton of stuff with kettlebells. You Would have to be you... careful. Why? Well, because the problem with the kettlebell is you'll get online to see some exercises, and the first thing you're going to see is like a kettlebell swing or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you have right? to watch your back. Well, and if you're not, don't have the form right, because you've got the weight out, you're momentum swinging, swinging yeah. it's a potential for injury, but I think they're great because they're, you can use them for anything. Okay. Potential for injury there. I wanted to touch on that as well. So if you don't know how to do any of these exercises, YouTube provides, I have done this before. I can't remember the exercise, but I'm thinking, what is this? So I typed it into YouTube and they show you exactly how to do that exercise. So like we said, if you don't know how to do something, uh, one of these, type it into YouTube or Google, more than likely you're going to find a, a video to show you how to do it. And do be careful with things like kettlebell swings or any of your weightlifting so you make sure you're using proper form because you could hurt yourself bad. Mm -hmm. I remember I did um, deadlifts one time in this class and I threw my back out really bad. Because <laughs> yeah. I was trying to go too fast. Yeah. And so, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, you're doing the proper form and your back is at a weird angle. and Yes, yes. So. Those are great. But yeah. So really no excuse. Uh, I know in the winter here in Ohio, we use kind of weather as an excuse, but it's uh, not an excuse. Really not excuses, Don't make any excuses. Doing, yeah. But one more um, topic I wanted to touch on is your mental health. Let's keep that on point too, because I know that the winter brings seasonal depression and things like that. Also cabin fever can make you go stir crazy. Um, here are some options for keeping your mental health intact. Try meditation if you haven't. It can be five minutes of your day. It can be five minutes of silence. You can also YouTube five minutes of meditation music. You can find apps. I mean, the sky's the limit on meditation, but you literally can just sit in a quiet room for five minutes. Breath work. So for example, just deep breathing, taking a couple deep breaths and just bringing it down, bringing down your stress levels. And then find enjoyment in things, whether it be music, laughter, um, engage with someone who fills up your cup. So call a good friend that you haven't talked to or a family member, um, just people that you enjoy talking to and you leave that conversation feeling better, not feeling stressed out or tired or any of that. And then lastly, read, read, read something you enjoy. So like I said, there are plenty I'm of one more too. What? Journaling. Oh yeah. 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 Because, I should have, I should have and, there, and there are different ways you can journal, but one of them is just what's called a mind dump. And when, yes. what I mean by that is, uh, you just start writing and, and start writing for the next five minutes and you don't even care if it makes sense or not, yep. but all these ferrets that are running around in your head, you're getting them out on the paper yeah. and afterwards, whew, I, I feel lighter yeah. for getting that out. Yeah. Because I think, yeah. Yep. I agree. 
Well, Macy, what I want to talk to uh, about today is the difference between digital currency and cryptocurrency. So when I'm meeting with a client, sometimes the question I seem to get is, hey, I've heard a lot about this Bitcoin. Is that digital currency? Crypto is like a hot topic. I haven't, I haven't seen a, a, there's only been a few clients that have walked in that haven't asked about crypto, I think. Right. It's getting, it's been around. So let's talk about Bitcoin. Uh, so cryptocurrency, let's bring it back. Mm -hmm. So cryptocurrency is a digital currency, but not all digital currencies are cryptocurrencies. Oh, okay. There's a difference there. And what I'm going to talk about today is mostly relates to Bitcoin, which is a form of cryptocurrency. So a digital currency can be just any currency uh, that is not in physical form, right? It's electronic. And government officials, politicians have kind of teased the idea of moving towards a digital dollar. If I'm the federal government, there are some advantages to having a digital dollar. One of them would be cost. Mm -hmm. I don't have to pay for the printing or the coining of these, uh, it's digital, right? Mm -hmm. So we've reduced the cost of that. The other thing is, if I am the government and in the United States we have an elastic money supply, meaning that we control the amount of money that's out there through the manipulation of interest rates. When we raise interest rates, we essentially contract the amount of money out there. And when we lower interest rates, uh, we incentivize lending, we incentivize business, we essentially expand the amount of money that's out there. So if everything was digital, that's much easier to control the money supply than, sure. than if I'm controlling it through printing as well. Sure. If I'm the federal government, I also now have the ability to tax more, right? Because I can see every transaction that takes place. Right. And Macy, you can't go to your neighbor's house to, uh, to buy something or you can't sell something to your neighbor without the government yeah. knowing about it because if you're receiving it in the form of a digital dollar, they see that. Yeah, somebody can, yeah. Right? Somebody can always see it, right? They also can control who gets the money and, and what you can spend it on, right? So if they are uh, targeting drug dealers or something like that, they can basically, if, they, if that's a known drug dealer, they can stop that digital currency from going to to their bank account or their, their wallet or whatever. Oh, wow. I never thought about things like that. Slippery slope there. Watch that. Yeah. So do you think we might ever transition back to like a bartering system? There's a problem with, but this is a great question. So this is a the problem with the bartering system. <laughs> I like that the drug dealer is what tipped off the question. Yeah. <laughs> the illegal stuff, but seriously. Sure. You can, I mean, but the problem with the barter system is for bartering to work, there has to be equal value. So if I'm good at making shoes and you're good at making knives, I could say, hey, I'm gonna make you a pair of shoes, you make me a knife, and that's a, that's yeah. a nice switch there, right? But Wait. what if what if I'm good at making shoes and you're good at making homes, yeah. building homes? How many shoes do I have to provide you? Yeah, you got a, a you know, lot of shoes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was the problem. I mean, at one point in time, cows were used as money yeah. uh, because cows were valuable, right? And they produced milk and, and uh, eventually they could be meat. So they, they were a store of wealth, they had value. But the problem with the cow is, uh, what if I want to trade my cow for a loaf of bread? I can't cut a piece of my cow off and give it to right. you. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So you know what they when they came up with instead of uh, cows? Julie's running the vacuum right now. <laughs> it's not Julie, I think it's Caden. Caden, which is great because uh, he's industrious, but the problem here is we might have some sound quality here. Um, they brought salt in. So for small, small purchases, uh, they would have salt. And so the old uh, terminology, not worth your weight in salt, that's where it came from because oh. salt could be measured out. It was necessary for survival. Uh, so that's where that came from. We're way off topic. But, yeah, we are. <laughs> so there, there is a value if I'm the federal government to having a digital currency because I can tax more, I can control the money supply, I can control who gets it, and I can see all the transactions that take place, right? So a cryptocurrency is also a form of digital currency, but uh, it's no longer the difference between a digital currency and a cryptocurrency are a couple main points. Number one, I would say decentral, it's decentralized. What I mean by that is a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin is not backed by a government. So the United States government does not own Bitcoin. Uh, the Chinese government does not own Bitcoin. Um, UK does not own Bitcoin. And so no one country has effect on that, decentralized. Mm -hmm. It's essentially power through the people. It's operated on a, uh, well, Bitcoin is operated on a blockchain platform. And the transactions that are made in Bitcoin are verified by the users. And this is called mining. Mining is the ability to verify transactions and also bring new coins onto the platform. The thing about Bitcoin that's different than the US dollar is Bitcoin has a fixed amount of coins. There are only 21 million coins 
and there will only ever be 20 million coins in existence. So that was kind of how, it, in many ways, that was the reason if, if you're a Bitcoin enthusiast, that's what you get excited about. Because while the dollar has an unlimited amount, they print dollars. If you look at the past year and a half, they have increased the dollar supply by 30%. So think about this. In the past, since COVID, they have pr printed an amount of dollars equal to 30% of all the dollars ever printed in existence in history, which is why we're seeing inflation right now, right? So if I'm a Bitcoin proponent, I would say, look, I've got a fixed supply of, of coins here. So as they are bought up, in theory, they, sh they should drive those up. But we've taken banks out with cryptocurrency. Crypt it's called crypto because it, uh, essentially those transactions are verified through encryption. And we've taken away the third party for verifying. We don't need a bank to verify the transactions, which means that we can reduce the cost. So I can send money to you or I can send money to a business very, very inexpensively versus having to send it through credit card payments or send it through a wire or something like that right. that, I, that I would be charged for. So that's the main difference between digital and crypto. A cryptocurrency is a digital currency, but not all digital currencies are cryptocurrency. Okay. Very I didn't know that. Yeah, that very is interesting. interesting. Cool. Yeah. All right, Nate Macy, I have no idea what we're going to talk about next, but I look forward to it, yeah. and uh, we'll see, see you then. See you next. Oh, my gosh. Derek, cut that out. Okay, see you next week.